Namaste guys. In this course, you are going to learn about SOLIDWORKS simulation. Okay, so if you are a beginner and never touched the SOLIDWORKS simulation and have no idea how the SOLIDWORKS simulation works, then this is the right course for you. And the best part is it is absolutely free. Okay, so you are going to learn a lot of things, why we do some things, what are the reasons, etc. a lot. And this course is designed for beginners. Okay. So let's see how to do SOLIDWORKS simulations. Okay. And before I go going further, there is a timestamp link in description. You can check it out. And if anybody able to support this channel financially, I will be thankful. You can also check out my other courses. Uh, for example, if you want to learn about SOLIDWORKS designing course, it is totally free of course that is available. You can check out the link in description. And if you want to learn about SOLIDWORKS animation and motion analysis, you can also check it out. Okay, its Udemy link is in the descriptions. Uh, I will be very thankful if anybody buy the course. Okay. Uh. Namaste guys. In this course, you are going to learn about SOLIDWORKS. In the first chapter, you are going to learn about basics of animations like Explore View. As you can see now. And you will learn about how to change color and appearances animation. How to make mechanism here as you can see a offset crank mechanism. How to make a 4 bar mechanism and analyze its trace path. Okay. And how to make it more correct. We will also plot various kinds of things like oscillation, velocities and other parameters in a 4 bar mechanism while analyzing. We will calculate how, to, how much torque or energy required in a certain mechanism in SOLIDWORKS motion analysis. After all this we will learn event based motion analysis that is very important in real life for making animations of robots and machines. You will also learn what are the different ways to animate and everything is covered in this course. Really guys I will thankful if you buy it okay so let's start so first thing what i have to do is uh, i have to do the simple simulation of it okay so if i go here i will look here you will see there is no solvox simulation tab here so what i need to do is go to solvox add-in here you will see solvox simulation okay other way to see that go here click on add-ins and go here you will see solvox simulation just in case if it is not visible in your SOLIDWORKS, it means that you do, doesn't have installed it. Okay. So you need to reinstall your SOLIDWORKS with SOLIDWORKS simulation. So close this and click on SOLIDWORKS simulation. When you click on it, wait some little time and a sol simulation tab will pop up. Click on it. Okay. When you first see, you will see all these kind of options are basically blocked. Basically, you are not able to use it. So first thing you have to do is to define a study type. What kind of study you are going to do? So click on here, click on new study. Okay. Just in case if anybody wondering what is study advisor, when you click on study advisor, here you see it basically guide for the beginners how to do SOLIDWORKS simulation, but uh, I don't want it. So yeah, ignore that. So click on here, click on new study. So here you can see different kind of studies that we can do. So in this course, we will talk about static, thermal, buckling, probe test, fatigue, okay, and design study, linear, non-linear simulations, okay. So we are going to cover all these things. Uh, I am not covering pressure vessel design and one more thing and frequency, okay. So I am not covering these two topics, okay. And I will also cover uh, use of 2D simplification in SOLIDWORKS. Uh, that is a very important thing if you ask me. So let's see about static simulation. So first thing that is covering covering is static simulation. So as the word I said static, the first thing that arises in your mind, static means that a object that doesn't move from its place. Okay. So static simulation is basically done on frame or anything that basically remains steady at its place. Okay. So this is where we will use static simulation. There is no linear simulation as well uh, that basically you can use with no linear objects. Okay. Uh, and as we, we go further, you will realize how big this tool and amazing these tools are. Remember, the complexity of the course will increase with respect to time. 
first i will teach simply but with respect to time the complexity will increase so make sure that you uh, fully listen what i say if you have doubts simply comment so click on static simulation because i am going to do simple static simulation click ok now first thing we need to understand boundary conditions so what is a boundary condition so boundary condition is basically that condition in which environment you are doing and what is the condition of your operators for example is uh, is i am doing simulation in a hot environment or cold environment because it affects the life for example if you take your steel in a negative temperature you can make it brittle material for those who are wondering how a tactile material can convert into brittle material uh, i ever saw the movie titanic so basically uh, have you ever wonder why titanic sink when it collide with the ice tip uh, why don't the ship just you know bend it why don't why it brittle down why it just broke it broke down there the reason is that at that moment engineer learned that at very low temperature that ductile material will act as a brittle material that is the reason titanic sink okay they discovered this kind of discovery uh, on on titanic case that that your steel metal material basically will act as a brittle material at low temperature so you need to make sure what are the conditions on which you are running your experiments and where it is fixed where it is moving etc other things because if you doesn't consider one part you are getting trashy results just you know in solid works if you put garbage in your input simulation then you will get garbage as a output results so make sure that you put a good amount of data in which environment you are doing okay so here you can see my static so first thing here is my part so first thing i need to define is what is the material of my part so simply right click on it here you can see apply material or apply favorite material if i click on apply material i can apply any material as per my requirement okay you can see various kind of colors other parameters here view okay i don't know why it's not showing poison issues uh it's not currently showing i don't know mm. they are graphs i don't know why where are those graphs currently view so here you can see different kind of materials available in my solvex simulations okay so you can choose any material as per your requirement so choose whatever material you want if you don't want any material you can also get custom material as per your requirement simply right click on it click on new library and you can create your own uh, but this will cover a later onwards okay so suppose i select the steel because i am doing simulation of steel and select this steel you can see various kind of properties for example elastic modulus poisson ratio mass density okay and other things click on apply and click on close here you can see on my part name you can see carbon steel pop up and here you, one thing you notice that a check sign is showing on it means that this condition is satisfied and we have successfully defined these conditions so first thing what i have done is i have defined that my material okay now second thing i need to define is constraints or connections so if i right click on it connections you can see uh there is nothing that uh, below connections basically there is arrow little arrow you will see in later onwards so connections will use when there are more than two parts in your design in my case it is a single part so i don't need to define connections connections to basically uh, what is the relation between two parts okay are they rigid are they connected are they bonded with each other don't worry you will learn about later onwards when you will see later onwards my videos in deeply how connections are and trust me they will get uh, they will burn your mind when you will see how to use connections okay it is a simple things uh, currently but let on what will uh, burn your mind next thing is fixtures so what is a fixture so as the name suggests fixture basically defined where it is fixed okay so in this video i am just basically doing cantilever simulation analysis so we know in cantilever one side is fixed and other is free to move okay so is there any side fixed the answer is no because i doesn't define which side is fixed 
so we can define it by using fixture so right click on fixtures you can see fixed geometry so select a face okay so in that way you can uh, make this face fixed so when we do simulation or apply load this face will not going to be moved okay you will also see advanced options but this will cover later onwards video okay so we will use simply standard fixed geometry click ok after that in a cantilever beam we know that there is a load applied so how to put a load so what you need to do is either you can click right click on external loads and apply from here or you can go here and apply force just to know you can also go to fixed uh, advisor or fixtures from here as well so click on here click on force now first thing it will ask what is the face edge or vertex for example here you can see i just moving my mouse here and it automatically selected the face if i select the edges it automatically select the edge okay as per my requirement so as i said it is a cantilever beam so i will select this edge okay but if i look closely you can see it is moving this direction but in cantilever we know that the load acts in downward direction so how can i define the direction so to define the direction click on selected direction okay now it is asking in which direction you want to put the load select edge or face so i want to apply the force in this direction downward so select this edge here you can see the arrow is showing now downwards now next thing we need to define what is the magnitude of the force for example if i type 500 newton so the 500 newton force is applied on here okay let's say it is 30 newton okay because it is a very small part not a very big part that is the reason i'm applying 30 newton force now somebody say how much 30 newton is simply divide 30 by 9.81 you will your get you will get your values in kgs okay remember i am using si units not psi that is inch pound seconds or psi i guess so all the units that are used here are in mmgs or si units okay so i applied a load of 30 newton click ok after that here's another thing called mesh so this thing you need to understand very carefully because if you don't understand what is mesh then you are just wasting your time learning this okay mesh is very important thing in solidworks so let's try to understand what is it what it is so if i right click on it click on create mesh here you can see coarse and fine so if i increase the fine click ok you can see uh, i got these number of uh, number of triangles here now if i right click on it click on create mesh but decrease the coarse size and click ok so you can see the number of triangles is decreased now and the size is big but which one is better bigger size or smaller size so if i right click on it create mesh and increase the size click ok so smaller one so the answer is the smaller ones for those who are not understanding consider these points uh, where these are joined are called vertices okay so higher the number of vertices better will be the result if you don't understand how higher the number of triangles will get you better results look at this program that i have made in python so here you can see my code so this is a sine graph now here only four points are shown okay but if i increase the number of points you can see my accuracy of the graph increase okay similarly higher the number of points will increase better will be the your result of your simulation but it's a but it has a drawback that is that it will consume a lot of time in your simulation so you need to increase or decrease the mesh size as per your simulation requirements okay and here you can see that if i decrease this uh, i will get a very low value or <laughs> garbage value for example let's say three so this is how my sign graph looks like for five this is my sign graph for eight this is my sign graph you can see the code it is very small code it is written by me okay 20 just to you know i have many other channels uh as sold works so you can learn if you want to learn you can learn from it and if you want to learn about machine learning and artificial intelligence that i also learned that but still unemployed 
my bad luck so make sure don't learn python if you are not getting any kind of job don't be like me okay so yeah so let's let's again move to the main topic so higher the number of mesh you will get better results okay after that you need to run this simulation so what you can do is run this study okay so click on run this study or simply click on here when you click on run this study it will do the calculation task here you can see my simulation is done now first question that arises in your mind okay the simulation is done but it is quite bendy okay so if i click on it and right click on show you can see stress graph okay this is the highest stress and lowest stress right click on displacement you can see uh, URES uh, engineering strain or uh, displacement okay my displacement graph what is the displacement i get i get 1.06 10 is power minus 3 remember it is minus 3 but you're wondering if it is true 10 1.06 10 is power minus 3 uh, the scale look quite odd i mean it doesn't look like it is 1.06 10 is power minus 3 because i can't definitely can't see that small diffraction so here's the thing whenever you do simulation solve works solve works simulation show 3000 times or 5000 times the actual deflection the reason is that so you can visualize it where is actually deflecting if it is actually show 1.06 10 to minus 3 deflection you will not able to visualize where is deflection so that is the reason solvex showing in this way okay you can also see strain graph okay just you know that i will cover in more detail how to do animation and other things later onwards so that's for all in this video and make sure you check the timestamp to learn about particular things so I hope you learned something from this video. Thanks for watching and have a great day. Namaste. So Namaste. In this video, I'm going to tell you how to do static simulation in SolidWorks. So first of all, I'm going to draw a sketch as per my requirement. So I'm just creating an eye beam. Uh, you can create IBM as per your requirement. Uh, you can customize uh, whatever you feel like it's good for you. So here's like this line at the center. Enter the value of 10 mm and 100 mm. Let's say 50 mm. Escape make it horizontal sorry press ctrl plus z it's like these two lines by pressing ctrl make it make i don't know Make it 80 and the distance from here to here is cancel. In this point to this point distance is 40. As you can see our sketch is turned into black it means that our uh, drawing is fully defined. Now go to fixtures, click on extrude. Now select mid plane and then and put all 100 mm. Make sure you select these things click ok after that go to solidworks add in make sure you click on solidworks simulation after that click on simulation go to study advisory click new study make sure you click on static so a question arises in your mind uh, where is static simulation is used static simulation is used when you know that uh, that you have a body or chassis or a beam on which a constant load is applied that is not very good time that is remain constant okay at that time you use static load if your load is varying with time that uh, at that time you use normally non-linear or linear di dynamic okay currently i am assuming that my load is constant and it just uh, putting here at a constant force so click okay before i start this uh, i need to make the area on which my whole load will act press ctrl plus 8 i am going to sketch now 
I am assuming that my whole load is acting on this cache now. Here what you will see when I go to simulation so static and I will show you something. Okay, first exit the sketch. Now click on part, click on apply favorable material, click paint carbon stream. After that go to fixture basic, click on fixed geometry, select this face and this face click ok now here comes the important thing click on force when i try to click on force as you can see i am selecting the whole beam but i just want to select this particular sketch so how can i do that to do that what i need to do is projection so what you need to do is uh, go to features select curves click on project curve select this sketch after that in uh, here select the face click ok now you can see oh sorry I guess I am doing something wrong. Right click on it, delete. Yes. I need to select split line. Sorry for my mistake. So select split line. And after I select this face, click OK. As you can see, now I am selecting this line only. I am not selecting this whole beam. Go to SolidWorks simulation. Sorry, static. Now click on external loads. Click on force. Select this face. As you can see, I am selecting this face only. Before that I am selecting this whole beam, uh, but I don't want, I just want my load will just act on here. So enter the value of 70,000 Newton or you can change the value as per your requirement and make sure the arrow is acting downward direction because my load is acting in, in y direction downwards, not in upward direction. If somebody say hey my load is acting upward direction, just click on reverse. As you can see the load is acting upward, but in my scenario the load is acting downward. After that click OK. Now, uh, go to mesh, right click on mesh, click on create mesh, click ok. Here you will see this is how the mesh look like. Now right click on mesh, create mesh, finer the mesh the better the quality of the result. You can adjust the parameters like what should be the uh, uh, width, height, depth of your mesh parameters or nodes as per your requirement in my case i just prefer this this normally uh, will do for me remember the my main aim is here just to tell you how to do a simulation okay so you can adjust and create whatever you want and remember one thing higher the mesh rate higher will be the quality of your result but it will also increase your simulation time etc so uh, i'm go i'm not going to do that I am just simply going to show you how to do that and how to plot graphs and other things in SOLIDWORKS static simulation. Now click on run this study. When you run this study what will basically uh, happening that is calculate. Now here you see the graph. Now go to displacement right click on it click control. Now the first thing you see is that the beam is bending too much. It I means too much. But here you will see that the deflection is currently 4.025 tens to power minus 1. But this is not the 4.025 tens to power minus 1 because it is way more higher. So why is showing me like this? Uh, the reason is that solely what showing is so much deflection is because so that you know where it is deflecting. If it doesn't show like this, you will never know where it is deflecting. For example, from an eight point eye, to, uh, eye of view, you will never uh, able to detect what is point uh, you never able to detect 0.1 mm deflection in a 15 uh, in a 1200 mm beam so how to see real deflection so to do that right click on it click on edit definition select true scale click ok as you can see this is the true scale this is the true deflection but for your from your eye, uh, eye point of view it look like a straight beam so right click on it click on edit definition click automatic click ok now right click on it click on animate here you can see it is currently showing me 5 frames per second you can change the frame per second by just uh, adding the number of frames you want and it is telling me the number of frames showing for example 150 but for example right click on it animate sorry stop 
enter the value of 60 click play now here you see it creating the frames uh, 60 fps and you can really get you can get in deep detail how does it bending and where is the maximum displacement and now you see it's a look very cool animation from here on you get get total clear picture how is going on now click on stop to that go to click on stress simulation click on show now right click on it click on section clipping so here you can see I select a section and you can see where the load acts you can select this section of the plane as per your requirement either you click on the arrow or choose the section where you want to see basically the stress in the beam at a particular point of length or width it's quite handy and you can take the photos from here and you can use it in your simulation analysis or you know uh, showing in your tables 50 mm now let's see another thing we can do ISO clipping here you can see where is showing me the values above the above this value for uh, four lakh something so if you want to show the stress at a particular value for example you want to know where is the stress above this value is acting on it so you can get a clear picture from here by also clipping it shows where the stress above this value is acting on it you can also click on proton also surfaces so to get a clear picture now let me show you another thing now right click on it click on probe select this line okay I'm selecting this edge click on graph on select make sure you click on selected identities oh, sorry for mistake now select this line click update now click on graph as you can see it shows me a clear picture how does my stress is acting on this line remember this line is just this uh, this long note the whole beam you can select the whole beam as per your requirement but i'm just showing this stress here question arises in your mind the stress is basically plot uh, in one missing stress and parametric distance parametric distance is nothing but uh, that uh, uh, that i told you previously the mesh length width remember uh, this is what the graph plots the number of triangles here it plots basically on that that is what is statically nodal stress or you can save this file and use it in your you know uh, excel or sheet or somewhere as per your requirement you just click on save you will get that one now last thing is strain strain it basically as we know change in length upon original length this is that is what we call strain so you can animate it remember all the parameters here showing are basically uh, 200 times or 500 times than the original so if you want to change it i already show you how to change it as per your requirement and here the frames are 60 fps so fps means frame per second so it gives you a clear picture how this animation goes on click on stop now click exit now click on plot tools and you can save as this and our animated plot tools click save as you can save the analysis in e-drive files as per your requirement if you want okay and section clipping section clipping is the same thing as i told you if you want to see where is the strength at at any point length width or anywhere else that is this uh, uh, you can easily see from here here you see the triangles here so basically these are the nodes uh, that i told you that basically the mesh size so because of because of the mesh size these triangles are showing on if you want to reduce them size just reduce the size of, the, of your mesh and you will get a much better result from here on 
and if anybody want to learn how to do no linear simulation if anybody want to learn how to do no linear simulation so here is a video you can see how i am doing a lone linear simulation you can get many thing as a result uh, the, the 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 link of this video is in the description you can watch it uh, i hope this video is useful for you if you have any doubts and queries make sure you ask the comments thanks for watching and have a great day namaste namaste in this video i am going to teach you about advanced fixture in solidworks so first let's see our geometry so here i just make a simple a cuboid okay so let's see what is the advanced fixtures in solidworks so click on new study click on static click okay after that right click on this apply the material as per your requirement i am going to apply plain carbon steel okay but you can choose any other material as per your requirement now right click on fixtures click on fixed geometry select this face click okay so go to fixture advisors click on advanced fixtures so in this video i am just going to talk about on flat faces if anybody want to learn on cylindrical faces you can check out the previous videos link in description okay so here the first thing we need to do is select a flat face okay now suppose somebody want to select a curved surface then you need to select on cylindrical faces okay for flat faces basically we use this okay on flat faces now let's see what does these things do as you move up you can see the animations showing what these things do as you can see these are showing upward downward and lateral suppose i click on this and enter a value of 5 mm so basically what it means that this face will move down to 5 mm okay click on okay click on run the study here you see i got a simulation result and if you notice correctly i doesn't apply any kind of load what i have done is i simply told solidworks that move this edge to 5 mm and you can see for a particular distance it tells me how much stress is generated here as you can see the value is quite large 4.71 tens to power 8 okay now let's see another options so click on edit definition if i click on here and enter the value 0 mm and make sure it is also 0 mm click okay and run the study you see that my graph is changed a little bit so a question arise uh, what happened uh, what basically actually happened here so basically when i put 0 mm and 0 mm it means that it can move downwards but there can't be any kind of movement in this direction and in this direction so basically it can't compress and it can't be shear load okay that is the reason i got it of oh, this kind of stress a question arise what is the advantage and where these kind of things are used suppose you have a beam you know that your beam is going to deflect by 3 mm and you want to calculate how much stress is generated due to the certain displacement at that point you use advanced fixtures there are many other instances as well for example vibrations or you know that the amplitude at which it going to vibrate you can also use there to calculate the stress okay remember this kind of advanced fixture mostly used for simulations uh for stress strain calculations in this you basically doesn't apply any kind of load you basically give a input value for example head 5 mm i give it and calculate what is the stress generate okay so this is where we use advanced fixtures if anybody have any kind of query and doubt you can just check out check out the link in description and make sure that you like us on facebook so that our facebook channel can grow and give you more educational knowledge thanks for watching and have a great day for any kind of query and doubt just comment okay namaste namaste in this video we are going to learn about advanced fixtures in solidworks 
so to understand advanced fixture we need to do some simulation so here i am going to do a bevel gate simulation by using advanced fixture so let's insert our bevel gear so bring it in okay and make sure that you have the same properties as here module is 2 number of teeth is 25 and gear number of teeth is 25 and this after that what you need to do is click ok close this right click on it click on open click ok now click here click on save as click on save as copy and continue make sure that you save this file on desktop or any other place but not on c library okay and change the name okay click save after that close this make sure that you don't use this in simulation because if you do any kind of changes or save this file it will become permanent in your library and you will not able to use we will gear in future onwards and it is quite you know messy thing so i highly recommend don't do this kind of stupidity because i have done this and i regret now close this as well don't save now click here sorry click on here click on assembly click ok now click on browse open the part that we have saved recently ok click open now right click on it click on show right click on this part make sure it's float so that we can move it and let's make some mates select this mate right plane sorry let's make it some oriented incorrect now select this and this face click ok and select this and right plane click ok after that press ctrl and right click on this part and drag this now click on mate select this point and select this point okay they are considering each other rotate now make it like this select this point and this point click ok now right click on this part click on fix move this part upwards and make it little orient as per the requirement click here sorry now hide the sketch now let's do advanced simulation now click console works add-in click console works simulation now after that click on simulation click here click on new study click on static click ok now give the material as per your requirement i am giving plain carbon steel after that right click on this delete because we don't want it right click on collections click on contact set click on no penetration select this one and the second one sorry right click on it click on component contact select this one and this one make sure it is no penetration click ok after that right click on it go to advanced fixtures ok now uh, here you will see there are different kind of fixture advanced fixtures cyclic use reference ge geometry on flat faces on cylindrical faces and spherical faces so here these are cylindrical faces so i am going to teach only about on cylindrical faces okay 
so if you go downward you will see these three things let's try to understand what these things do so here you can see uh, this one basically means axial this one translating and this one is rotation so here if you over your mouse you can see it's radial circumferential and it's axial so basically what it means radials for example click on it select the cylindrical face so if i click on radial and give it some value for example 0 mm it means that this face can't move uh, in this direction okay so it means this face can't move in this direction sorry in y axis so if, when i enter the value 0 mm it means that this face has a constraint that it can't move on y axis okay and if i click on axial you can see this arrow so it means here you can see it returns 0, 0 so it means that this can't move in this direction as well so the only thing it can do is rotation I'm you can also put the value of rotation I am uh, I'm going to put let's say uh, suppose I want to rotate the gear 5 degree so 5 into pi divided by 180 a question is why the hell I am doing this uh, the reason is that all the value here are going to be in radians so i need to enter the value in radians so 5 degrees 0 0.087 radian okay so enter the value so what does it mean that my this gear is not going to move in x axis y axis it can only rotate 0 0.087 degree okay Remember, it is a very important to use advanced fixtures because when you do real life simulations or advanced simulations, you are going to use mostly advanced fixtures because they are the main parts. Okay, click OK. Now, right click on this, sorry, right click on fixtures, click on fixed geometry, select this, click OK. I am assuming this one is fixed. Okay. Now basically the main aim is that I want to know how much stress is generated. So what I can do is, do is simply click on run the study. Now it will going to do first meshing. After that it will run the simulation. Now simulation is done. So you can see the results. And here you can see the stress strain. So a question arises where these kind of cylindrical faces are used. For example when you are sure that your part cylindrical face is going to rotate up to this level of degree or going to move in x or y axis up to certain mm and you know sure about it and you want to calculate how much stress is going to generate for that uh, things you are going to use advanced fixtures when you apply the load you will get to the value of stress and strain and what is the displacement but when you apply the fixtures you basically calculate what is the stress generated when your part extend rotate up to this degree or extend okay so this is what here is done here my gear rotate 5 degree and i have what i have calculated is the stress okay so i hope you learn something from this video if you have any doubts and queries please ask in comments thanks for watching and have a great day and more cool videos are coming First thing we have to do is go here, click on NSI metric, click on power transmission, click on gears. Now first we have to draw internals per gear. Okay. Uh, let's wait. Now choose the module, number of teeth and the, let's say the thickness, the face width, let's say it is 30 mm. Okay. Now click OK. Now close this. Now what we need to do is select this. Uh, click on spur gear. Import it. Make sure that the module is same. Because this gear has a module too. So this one will also going to have a module too. Now make the number of teeth be 30. Move downwards. Let's say phase width is also 30 mm. Click OK. Now close it. Now select this face. Go to the mate. Select this face. Click OK. 
uh, select this and press Ctrl plus 8 for normal screen to the view. As you can see, they are not much, uh, they are not totally coincide. So, what we can do is simply click on it and drag it a little bit here. Okay, uh, just to note that we are going to do uh, simulation, not motion analysis. So, I don't need to define lots of mates here. Okay, so what we can do is go to Solvox, add in, click on simulation and hide this solvox flow simulation because i am not doing any kind of flow simulation okay now after that what we need to do is go to your simulation tab click on here click on new study uh, that says a static one click ok now we have to define some constraints so select this and go to advanced fixtures uh, click on cylindrical faces okay so select this face and move downwards so now we'll try to understand what are the different constraints and their meanings okay so if I select this so it means that it, it is not going to move in y direction as you can see the value is 0 it means that it is not going to do y direction here you can see this gizmo so it, this axis defined y axis if I select this, it means that it is not going to move in x direction, okay? Because if it is moved, then I will get a uh, wrong results. One more thing that we have to do is, I also want that this gear will not rotate. So what I can do is select this and click and apply zero, okay? Click okay. After that, what we need to do is go here, click on advanced fixtures again. So select cylindrical face select this internal face go downwards select this one zero and select this one this one is also zero now i want to rotate it up to three degrees now d into pi divided by 180 so it is 0 0.0523 just to know that all values that you Put in solvers are in radians units, so you need to make sure that you put the value in radians, okay? Uh, or let's say we wanted five, five I, I think is much better as compared to three, de, uh, three degree. So five into five by one eighty, it is point zero eight seven two. So click on here, enter the value of point zero eight seven two, point zero eight seven. Click OK. Now what we need to define is we need to define the material. So right click on it. Uh, they all have plain carbon steel but if you want to change the material you can change it as per your requirement now here another thing that is component contact so right click on global click on read because we are going to define our own so right click on connections click on contact set uh, make sure that is no penetration because there is no penetration between them okay uh, instead select this right click and click on component contacts select this one and this one make sure there is no penetration you can also add friction as per your requirement i am adding a friction of 0 0.05 and, and let's try to do the simulation select this face press ctrl plus 8 and click on run the study if you want you can also change the mesh geometry as per your requirement <clears throat> but in my case i am not doing any of these things It might take some time to do the simulation so you need to keep calm and watch the show So our simulation is done, let's see the results. So right click on displacement, click on show. So as you can see the gear has a lot of stress. Just to know if anybody wondering why there is no stress on these gear much. The reason is that uh, this gear has a fixed geometry. It means that this geometry is not going to move or anywhere else. That is the reason you are not able to see much stress here. Okay. 
but if you zoom in you can see the teeth here are getting stressed and you can also get the value of what is the maximum stress that is 4.69 and it takes a lot of time in my pc as well so do do a favor on yourself do do the simulation on a good pc not a not a pc like me okay now right click on it you can define uh plot factor of safety okay for example uh, all bodies and set the upper limit to 10 click ok uh, so factor of safety you can see so here is a lot of stress so you need to do work on it ok so I hope you learned something from this video just in case I have already teach lot of times how to plot graphs and other things so if you want to learn how to plot graphs and various points and values in this case similarly what you can do is just check out the link in description of my various solveworks simulation courses where I've explained these things a lot of time okay so you can watch it there and I've explained it very briefly calmly you can watch it and if you have any kind of doubts and queries make sure that you ask in comments and if you have any kind of special query you can message me on my facebook page link in descriptions and i hope you learned something from this video and make sure that you like subscribe and share this video to motivate thanks for watching and have a great day namaste Namaste guys, in this video, I am going to show you how to calculate stress strain when a torque load is applied. Before I start this video, make sure that you subscribe our new channel Mechanical Coder and Engineer Know for better understanding of engineering concepts. Ok, so let's get started. So first of all, select the front plane, click on sketch. After that, first thing we are going to do is, we are going to make a shaft. So select a circle. Draw a circle, ok. Now give it a diameter as per your shaft requirement. Let's say 90 mm or 90 mm is too big. Uh, let's say 40 mm. Now go to features, click on extrude boss base. Click on middle plane. Now increase it as per your length requirement, ok. Click ok. Now after that go to simulations click on new study click on static click ok now so apply the material as per your requirement so i am applying plain carbon steel but you can choose any other material as per your requirement next thing is fixtures uh, here you see a options called connections connection is basically used when you have more than uh, one or two part or you have parts uh, or features that are not uh, merge e merge with each other okay so here is the fi fixtures fixture basically mean uh, what you want to fix or move so right click on fixtures click on fix geometry select this face so basically what i'm telling that select this face and this face is fixed this face is not going to move this is what it means by fixed geometry click ok after that right click on it click on sorry now right click on external loads as i told you i am interested in torque so select the torque select this face okay now it is asking for a axis or cylindrical face you can select this face again but here you will see that it is selecting the whole shaft but i just want to put a load at this particular for example say a small strip of area so how can i do that so to do this trick go to first model select the front uh, select the top plane click on sketch press ctrl plus 8 for now i to the view draw a simple line now exit the sketch go to features click on curves click on split line select this click ok so you see i got a face selected click on static 
click here click on torque select this as you can see i am not selecting the whole i am just selecting a particular face so this is what i want basically for example if you are making or your car or uh, shaft okay so there is basically a particular face that basically facing all the torque okay and this is just a rigid body so apply the torque as per your requirement let's say 500 uh, newton meter okay and you can reverse the direction if you want click ok after that either you can right click on mesh and create the mesh as per your requirement but in my case this mesh is uh, for example if i click ok as you can see this mesh is quite fine so this will work for me ok now click on run the study after simulation you will see this kind of result a first question arises in my mind what the hell is this and why it is too big so basically what happened when you do stress strain simulation solvex show the results uh, 500 times or sometimes 200 times higher than the original for example if i right click on it and go to chart options uh, go to definition uh, you see this is automatic this is 209.507 times the original if i click on true scale and click okay so this is the original and if i right click on the spacement click on show again right click on it click on uh, chart definition definition true scale click okay so here you can see so this is the maximum st uh, strain uh, suppose someone ask hey man uh where is the maximum you know stress or minimum stress so check out this option here here i'm currently in strain tab so i will get the value of maximum st strain and minimum strain oh sorry first right click on it show right click on it click on chart options so here you can see so here the maximum stress is happening and here is the minimum stress you can see just by the point okay so this is the what i like about solvex that is basically telling the point exactly where is the maximum stress and where is the minimum stress okay i hope you learned something from this video if you want to plot the graph from this video uh, from this sorry simulation you can check out my other links other videos link in descriptions thanks for watching and have a great day make sure that you subscribe our other channels for better understanding of engineering concepts thanks for watching and have a great day namaste namaste guys in this video we are going to see how to calculate fatigue so before i discuss about fatigue let's try to understand what is fatigue and why there is need to learn it so basically fatigue tells what is the life of your product and how much your product is going to last okay you can say the quality of your product so here what i have done is that right click on it click on any definition that i have run my cycle 1 million times so what 1 million times a question is what is 1 million times so what i have done is that i have applied a load of 3000 newton okay at this end and this side is fixed and due to that i got some results stress strain results okay so this is my stress remember but this uh, happen only one time what if i do this thing applying load 1 million times 10 raised to power 6 times okay so what will going to happen my this part and how much stress strain or damage it will going to face okay this is what we call fatigue there are many parameters how to calculate it i also have done python coding for on it uh, how to do on it okay and uh, you can check out the link in description and so let's see how to do this simulation okay so first click on here click on part click okay first thing we need to make is is make our part so let's make the part escape i am going to make a hollow pipe
now here see i have made this pipe and this thing so the main purpose of split line is just to make this face so that i can apply load nothing else okay so now go to solveworks simulation okay click here click on new study to do fatigue analysis you need to do first a simulation okay if it doesn't do any simulation you can't able to use fatigue so click on static and click ok because first we are going to do for static simulation now first thing we need to define is what is the material of our product so click on apply edit materials uh, let's say i am choosing ai si 1035 steel okay apply close after that go to fixture advisory click on fix geometry select this face because this face is fixed and click here click on force select this face click on selected direction select the top plane select this enter the value of 3000 click on reverse direction so click ok so let's try to understand what i have done in static simulation so basically i am saying that i have a hollow pipe whose one end is fixed and at the other there is a load of 3000 newton is applied okay now if i click on run this study i got this result okay so you can clearly see very stress uh, very high stress and whatever things okay now let's try to do static simulation now click here click on new study click on fatigue sim okay now there are different kind of fatigue simulation the first one is constant amplitude what is mean by constant amplitude? Constant amplitude means that the uh, stress is happening 3000 Newton. Remember that I, I have applied a load of 3000 Newton. When a constant amplitude load is applied, it means that throughout my cycles, the load is 3000 Newton. Okay. The other one is variable amplitude history data. This one you will use when you have done experimental data and you have some data uh, to do in real life. There are other ones, harmonic fatigue, uh, this one if you have some function of your load data and the last one is random vibration. Uh, this is one little complex uh, but I will cover some other later on videos, okay. But in this case, we are going to learn constant amplitude. So click OK. Now first thing we need to do is define loading constant amplitude. So right click on it, click on add event. Here you will see different kinds of option, fully reverse, zero based, loading ratio, find cycle speak. So fully reverse means that 3000 3, Newton load applying in the downward direction as well 3000 Newton load applying in the upward direction. Okay. So this is what it means fully reversed, zero based. It means that only 3000 Newton load applying in downward direction. There is no upward direction and loading ratio you will define how much load is acting downward and upward you will define a ratio basically okay and find cycle peaks uh, this is other one we will talk about some future onwards uh, we will define the number of cycles okay for example 1 million so add three zeros so this is 1 million click ok here you will see the part option so right click on it click on apply edit fatigue data so you will see like this so first you need to define a SN curve so SN curve basically tells that uh, how much the life of your product is basically whatever simulation you are going to do it is basically going to define by SN curve okay so click on file so basically I am doing simulation on uh, I am doing simulation on steel so select the material ok I am selecting steel click ok here you can see the SN curve uh, I highly recommend that you please check out my blog link in description for better understanding what is going on else you will face problems and there is also a python code on it how to calculate these kind of thing in python ok uh, click ok sorry cancel click apply close now what you need to do is click on run this study so after i have run this study you will see something that i got some results
so right click on it here you can see other kind of uh, things called life damage load factor so if i click on life so here you can see the red part has a life of 1.037 10 to the power 5 a question arise most of you not able to visualize what is mean by 10 to the power 5 or cycles so suppose like this suppose i have a bearing who have to rotate 10 revolutions per day okay remember it is rotating 10 revolutions per day and it has a maximum life of 1000 revolutions it means that maximum it can rotate 1000 revolutions so if i want to calculate what is the life of my bearing it is very easy it is 1000 divided by 10 so i can say that the life of my bearing is 100 days so similarly here i go in cycles so if i know how much the load or cycle my part is going to face in a single day or a job i can easily calculate the life of my products whatever it is if you see i was so advertisement like it say hey i give you one to two years five years so basically they calculate what is the cycle of your product okay based on that calculation they calculate what is the guarantee and uh, life period warranty they will give you so if you right click on it fatigue component click on damage so here you can see here you get the maximum damage here you get a damage of 96.44 percent okay similarly you can see other options load factor any definitions chart option show minimum so here you will get the minimum and here you will get the maximum load factor okay similarly right click on it damage select this uh, right click on it click on edit definition chart option click on show maximum so here you can see here you will get a maximum stress or maximum damage okay i am showing the maximum damage graph so here you at this point you will get maximum damage in your pipe i hope you learned something from this video i have post a link in description about the blog where you can learn about what is sn curve what are its advantages how fatigue lab calculated and python code etc so you can check out the link in description for better understanding and knowledge i hope you learned something from this video if you have any kind of doubts and queries Make sure that you ask in comments. Thanks for watching and have a great day. Namaste. Namaste. In this video, you will learn how to do optimization or design study in SOLIDWORKS. So first question arises in your mind. What is the need to do design study or optimization in SOLIDWORKS? Or what is its real application? For example, as you can see, this is a I-beam. Now, when you go to a vendor and ask for the vendor's price, it will say it will charge you on the basis of mass of iron or material that you are going to buy. Because of that, it will going to increase the cost, uh, cost of your production or your product. So, how can you reduce the cost of product by reducing the weight of the I-beam? But when you want to reduce the weight of the I-beam, you don't want to compromise its factor of safety or maximum stress it can handle because it will gonna impact the quality of your product so basically optimization is used to enhance the quality but reduce the price or cost so in this video we will learn how to do it remember to do this optimization uh, first you need to do is check out my previous video in which I told you how to do static simulation in ThreadWorks. Remember, without that, you can't do uh, whatever I'm doing in this video. Because uh, to do design study, you need to do first a simulation. After that, you can do design study. So to, de to, to do design study, click on the study advisor arrow, click on new study. After that, select design study, click okay now here you see it is asking variables 
आपसे एक क्वेश्चन राइज यू माइंड वट इज ए वेरिएबल सो क्लिक ऑन एट पैरामीटर्स हेयर आई ऑलरेडी सिलेक्टेड द पैरामीटर्स सो लेट मी टेल यू वट आर द पैरामीटर्स पैरामीटर समथिंग दैट वी आर गोइंग टू वेरी सो डैट आवर सो डैट आई गेट द लेस सो आई सो यू कैन से आई गेट गुड फैक्टर ऑफ सेफ्टी और स्ट्रेस एट ए लेस मास सो लेट्स एट पैरामीटर फ्रॉम द स्केच फॉर एग्जाम्पल क्लिक है डिलीट 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 सो नाउ सेलेक्ट दिस विथ हंड्रेड एम एम नाउ नेम इट सो इट विल मेक ईजी फॉर यू नाउ टाइप एंटर आफ्टर दैट सेलेक्ट अनदर रो एंड सेलेक्ट दिस ट्वेंटी एम एम दिस इज बेसिकली द डेप्थ और समटाइम कॉल फ्लैंज ऑफ विथ और समथिंग एल्स एंड एट लास्ट सेलेक्ट दिस डेप्थ ओके डेप्थ and this thing is called thickness thickness and this is called uh, let's say this is called depth now click on apply and click okay now add other parameters depth and thickness here you see uh you see a value of minimum maximum and step and here you see range with step discrete values range so range we step basically uh, currently we are seeing is minimum value maximum value and step value so basically what going to happen when i do the simulation it will start uh, with with the current with the conditions that uh, that my width is 50 mm and at that time my depth is 40 mm and my thickness is 10 mm and it will run a simulation on just in just three in uh, in these three parameters now when it satisfy these three parameter it will now run a simulation when my width is 50 mm depth is 120 mm and my thickness is 10 mm in this way it will do a permutation uh, permutation combination like thing and we get the result here you see it will run a total active scenario 27 but as you know my width is uh, total width is 100 mm so i want that my minimum width is remain 100 mm and depth should be at least 80 mm because i want that the scenario it don't affect and thickness to tend to 10 and 30 mm now a question as you mind why i am selecting the step value 50 mm maybe some people don't understand what is mean by depth 50 mm 40 mm 10 mm don't worry when i run this simulation you will realize what it means now click on add constraint click on add sensor click on simulation data remember you can only use simulation data when you have already run uh, run the simulation if you don't then you can't do this uh, design study click okay now here it is asking uh what is the minimum stress maximum stress or in between so basically i want that my stress should no go beyond 50 so click on less than because i don't want that my stress go above 50 newton per mm square so it will decide uh, so it will run this simulation and see where i got a Uh, maximum stress of 50 newton per mm square with a less weight now click on add sensor click on mass properties select this i beam click okay now here i goal is to minimize the mass if you want to maximize the mass just click here and click maximize and it will do the maximization now remember we have done this 100 150 and 50 mm now i am going to run this sim simulation and you will realize what is this thing do now when i click on run remember it will do a total 12 scenarios if you want to more accurate and better result then what i say uh, what i recommend you is reduce the step size 1 mm in every case but i am not doing it because when i do that it will going to take very 
long time and it is just waste for me because my main aim here is to tell you how to do a simulation okay it up to you how much quality you want if you want much better quality just decrease the step size for mm or 0.5 mm as per your requirement okay now click on run when you click on this you will see it is starting running a scenarios now remember the st step size here 100 mm is the initial width and depth 80 mm and thickness remember thickness is was 10 mm now it running the simulation now here you can see it running the simulation now remember uh, what was my step size 100 150 mm okay now 50 mm please now it runs the simulation or at a depth of 80 and 10 mm if you uh, okay i can't go back to show you so it is running within the variable range and here you can see where uh, where is basically uh, closing my constraint the red part is basically have stress greater than 50 newton per mm scale because of that it uh, it just uh, show them red because these results are not ideal or beneficial for me but they contain they also contain less mass but they are not going to recommend me because they uh, are increasing the limit of 15 in the prime scale here my simulation is done and you can see when my width is 100 mm and depth is 120 mm and thickness is 10 mm at that point i got a stress value of 39.126 and a weight of 5280 gram and here are the currents uh, at current my width is 100 mm depth is 80 mm and thickness is 20 mm what you can see is it increased my depth and decreased my thickness because of that i got this value so this is how optimization work here is the optimization uh, this is basically the current figure you see is the optima uh, optimization figure okay if you want the original this is the original okay and this is the optimal one i hope you like this video if you have any doubts and queries make sure you ask comments and please give me the valuable feedback what kind of video tutorial you want and what you want to learn i can make video tutorial as per the requirement thanks for watching and have a great day namaste namaste friend in this video i will tell you how to do a conduction simulation analysis in SolidWorks. So in this simulation, uh, I will tell you two kind of scenario. First is a simple body and second one is a composite body. Okay. So first I will make a simple body. Uh, so I am basically in assembly mode and click on new part. After that select this new part and click on edit component. Expand this. Select a front plane. Click on sketch. Press control plus 8. Now. Draw a sketch of 100 by 100 mm. Click OK and extrude it up to a length as per your requirement. Here I am taking it as a 50 mm. OK, here is our body. Now go to simulation. First exit the, uh, exit the edit component. After that go to simulation. Click on new study click on thermal click ok right click on parts click on apply material now select the material as per your requirement make sure you just need to check the value that thermal conductivity value is given for example in this scenario 50 watt meter kelvin is given as a thermal conductivity so i am choosing this you can choose any material as per your requirement but make sure you know that the SOLIDWORKS show the value of thermal conductivity because in some cases you will realize that SOLIDWORKS doesn't give the value of thermal conductivity. So make sure you always choose a material uh, whose value is given in SOLIDWORKS. So apply and close. After that what I am going to do is applying uh, temperature load. So click on temperature, select a face and click the units for example 250 degrees Celsius you can enter the value as per your requirement and 
click on thermal loads click on temperature and select this face and select the temperature as per your requirement click ok now run this study as you can see it plots our heat graph now click on this face press ctrl plus 8 click on plot tools click on probe now I am just clicking on points so that I will get uh, a basically a rough idea how does the graph flowing remember it is a 1D plot so it doesn't matter I, uh, I click on at the top or I click at the bottom uh, it will just a 1D graph ok I have done a 1D simulation and click on graph here you see the temperature variation ok uh, remember here the units are shown are in Kelvin not in uh, Celsius uh, here you can see the value of uh, some average or maximum root mean square value you can change it as per your requirement uh, or you can have it as per your requirement and you can click on save the result uh, for your CSV file click OK now a main question how to calculate uh, heat flux so to calculate heat flux go to result advisory click on new plots click on thermal after that this on display click on it select heat resultant heat flux remember I doesn't, uh, it doesn't matter what uh, heat flow in x y or z the main thing I am focusing is, is, the, is on the resultant so that is the reason I am clicking on resultant heat flux make sure the units are in watt per meter scale click on show vector plot uh, to give the better uh, how does heat flow now click on plot here you see when I click on every anywhere the value of the value is remain same 2.25 okay watt per meter scale tends to 5 so even if I plot a graph you can see it is a straight line because we know that Q is nothing just Q equal to minus K A T2 minus T1 upon T if you put the values of all the things we calculate uh, we know for example k is 50 uh, i guess the material is 50 area is 100 by 100 100 mm so you, you need to convert uh, convert the unit either you convert a in meter so that uh, so that t in meter you can calculate it because our units here are in meter scale so convert all these units in meter okay and we got the value of q now let's talk about the composite beam so to do a composite beam first go to assembly click on insert component click on new part go to model uh, go to model select on this part go to assembly click on edit component now select a face click on sketch press ctrl plus 8 draw a square uh, extrude it extrude it per your requirement it is not necessary what I am showing here you also do the same click 20 mm click ok now exit the exit this simulation exit this uh, sorry uh, edit part click on new study click on thermal click ok uh, click on parts select part 1 click apply edit material uh, so first material I am applying is alloy steel as you see in the first case now in second part click on apply material select any material as per your requirement for example cast alloy steel here here we can see wait a minute thermal expansion what I want is here we can see the thermal conductivity value is 38 volt meter Kelvin so apply and close it so we basically define two materials now go to thermal loads click on temperature just select this face a question will arise in your mind what will happen if I select this face and this face just remember if I select this face uh, top face and side face uh, then my simulation will become a 2D and 3D for example if I select this face now my simulation become 2D now, uh, if, uh, and I get the value of Q different at different points it will not seem at all over the points because now my simulation is 2D if I select 
all the all three faces my simulation become 3d and i will get a different value at every point even in the inside so choose as per the requirement here i'm just showing a simple 1d simulation okay click celsius enter the value of celsius as per your requirement again click on thermal loads click temperature select this face uh, select unit celsius click ok after that click on run the study and here we got our graph uh, sorry our plot now for example if somebody want to see uh, somebody want to plot how does the uh, temperature is changing so just click on it and select the locations first delete all clear selections now select point by point remember the points more close are the more better and accurate graph you will get now go downwards click on graph here you see here you see a sudden decrease uh, it is because the gap here is quite big if the gap is not that big you will see a straight line okay because of that the distance is not same here at here because of that it is not a fully straight line now let's see how to see uh, heat flux so click on temperature click on heat flux resultant click show as vector plot let's let's check uh, let's see without vector plot click ok here you will see the heat flux vector plot heat flux plot click on probe click on it as you can see the values remain on the same at uh, at all points it doesn't matter where you click go to graph here you can see the value remains constant if you like this video make sure you like subscribe and share this video uh, more tutorial on heat transfer are coming uh, I hope you like this video. Thanks for watching. Make sure you like, subscribe and share and watch our other cool tutorials for example no linear simulation and others. Uh, link is in the description. Thanks for watching and have a great day. Namaste. Namaste guys. This is CAD Knowledge and in this video you will learn how to do a thermal simulation in SOLIDWORKS for beginners. So to do a thermal simulation we first need a geometry. So select a plane in which I am going to first draw a sketch and my geometry 200 by 100 this is the dimensions of our plate on which a I am going to place my heat now you can reduce the thickness to 5 mm after that what I am going to do is I am going to draw fins in which my heat is going to transfer say 20 mm and 20 mm and the diameter is 10 mm now go to linear sketch select linear sketch pattern after that go downwards select entities to pattern select this sketch make sure the distance is 20 mm and increase the number of the pattern now select the y axis and just increase the pattern as you can see they are coinciding so make sure you are doing uh, that you increase the distance center distance between them so increase it and click on this reverse direction after that increase the number as per your requirement here i draw the shape of my fins basically i am using circular fins next to up to the length of 70 mm click ok now go to solidworks adding click on solidworks simulation after that go to simulation now click on study advisory and make sure you click on this arrow and click on new study now select thermal because I am going to do a thermal simulation in it works click ok after that first thing we need to do is apply material so right click on part 4 
click on apply favorite material select plain carbon steel so this material is now plain carbon steel now first thing I'm going to do is apply a load click on thermal loads click on heat power so and select this face make sure that the arrow direction is upward as you can see these are small tiny arrows and section is upward now apply a load of 5000 uh, watt I hope you all know about thermal uh, heat transfer so basically what I'm doing here that I'm applying a 2000 load uh, 2000 volt heat here click OK and click on convection and I'm going to trying to cool this plate uh, by air click on select all exposed phases and make sure you uncheck the bottom face after that go to convection coefficient enter the value of 20 mm 20 volt per meter square Kelvin you can change the dimension as per your uh, requirement here it's asking for the bulk ambient temperature so bulk ambient ambient temperature is the temperature of the surrounding for example uh, you you are boiling a water so the temperature of the boiling water is 100 degrees Celsius but what is the temperature of your surrounding for example it is 25 degrees Celsius so you will enter the value of 25 degrees Celsius here that is the bulk ambient temperature so in so here 273.15 plus 25 remember here the units are in Kelvin so the exact value is 298.15 Kelvin now click OK our simul our setup is ready and what you can do is right click on mesh and create mesh you can increase or decrease the quality of mesh as per your requirement or you can set parameters as per your requirement but here I don't need it because my main aim is just to show how to do meshing so after clicking ok here you see the mesh remember higher the quality of mesh higher will you get the quality in simulation result after that click on run this study when you click on run this study now simulation is gonna happen and you will see how does the heat distribution goes on now click on control plus 8 I'm, what I press is control plus 8 now a question in arise your mind how can I see uh, the temperature curve so there are two ways the first way is go to pro tools click on pro after that make sure you select at location now select the bottom after that select stop plate now in, in the similar way just select the point at the top so that you will get a graph now move downward click on plot here you can see the plot graph with respect to distance and at the top is we got a temperature near about 112.17 Kelvin here you can read the temperature here you see 112126 uh, in Kelvin remember the temperature units are in Kelvin you can also save the data just by clicking save when you click on save you your data will get in a excel file with the extension of CSV you can change the name as per your requirement now click on cancel now another method is go to pro tools click on ISO clipping now somebody say hey I want to only see the temperature that is above 1341 so what they can do is just select the values as per your requirement and it will show the value above the value that you have selected as you can see here the, all the temperatures shown here is are above this temperature click on ISO2 now what you will see e is that temperature in between the range of these here 1 2 1 3 it, it will show the value above the values and 1 3 1 7 you will get the values above it okay you 
you can also add or animate it sorry you will not get the animation of this uh, animation is not available for this type of plot so you will not get the animation and you can click on report so that you can make your own reports if anyone don't know how to make report and want more details you can just click on the no linear description uh, no linear video description now come to the main point how can we select uh, how to select a particular dia and height so that we get minimum temperature at the top and bed and the best heat transfer now this is a question of about design study so i will talk about design study in the next video or the upcoming videos till then i hope you enjoy your days and enjoy quarantine due to coronavirus make sure you learn every day thanks for watching and have a great day check out the link in the description for more education contents and video links thanks for watching and have a great day namaste namaste guys in this video you will learn how to select a particular diameter and a uh, good length so that you will get a maximum heat transfer in uh, simulation so a question arise in your mind what is the need and where to use how to use and what kind of steps we need to do this kind of simulation so before i start this video make sure you check out our previous video uh, because in previous video i have told you how to do the simulation if you don't do the simulation before you can't able to do this uh, whatever i'm going to show a uh, simul uh, design study you can't able to do that so make sure you have done the simulation before uh, before uh, watching this video you can watch this video uh, the link is in the description now so to do design study what first need to do is uh, we need to do the simulation after that go to study advisory click on blue uh, blue arrow select new study after that click on uh, design study click okay now here you can see the word optimization basically what i am doing is optimization so the first thing here you see variables constraints and goals so variable are basically those things which i want that change uh, which uh, which i want basically change so that i get maximum optimization and better result so a question arise in your mind so what are the variables here in this simulation so let's see what are the variables here click on to add variables click add parameter after that when you see this box go down below and select the diameter okay as you see i selected the diameter you will get uh, you will see the value make sure you type the name whatever you select so that it will get easy for you here diameter now the second thing i want to select is the height so search for the height dimensions here is the height 50 mm sorry so basically what i have done accidentally that i select this dimensions in diameter block so what i can definitely do is just type height and select the below one and now go and select again this diameter remember it is my mistake if you don't do that mistake don't worry sorry type diameter now here i am going to change only these two parameters to get maximum uh heat transfer so click apply after that click okay now here but but in variables you will only see height not diameter so click down this and select diameter now here you see range with step discrete value and range here i am selecting range with step and range with step so a question will arise in your mind what is range with step so let me tell you what is a range with step so in basically range with step you will select a, you will type a minimum value and maximum value so and you will type a step of 25 uh, 25 mm or whatever you want 
remember lower the step value higher you will get the uh, better you will get the result so let me tell you what it do for example uh, assume that my current diameter is 10 mm now it will do simulation when my diameter is 10 mm and height is 25 mm when it done the simulation when when my diameter is 10 mm height is 25 mm it will do another simulation in which my diameter is 10 mm but my height is 25 plus 25 mm 50 mm so the next case scenario is 10 mm diameter and 50 mm length and the third scenario in which my diameter is 10 mm and my total height height is 75 mm similarly now the next case scenario runs in which my diameter is 15 mm but my height is 25 mm so it will run the simulation with all the given values uh, you can say permutation and combinations uh, that is basically going on here so let's change the value it to 10 here you can see total number of active scenarios remember higher the active scenarios higher you will get a better chance to get a result but higher the active scenario higher you do not take a time so i am going to increase this step value so that my total active scenario will get reduced as you can see it is now 15 i am reduced to now more 20 mm because it is just a waste of time for me the main aim uh, my hair is only that you will learn how to do simulation now let's see another things discrete value is basically now when you click on discrete value it will uh, randomly uh, it will just ask you enter the number separated by for example 50 mm you wanted a height of 50 mm and after that you said i want a height of 10 mm uh, 15 mm 10 mm so basically what basically happened here you will enter the values at which you want that that is the height at which you want just simulation for example when you select range with steps you get the fixed step values and you will get the result but in this case you enter individual height values at which you want what uh, at which you want to calculate okay select range, uh, and there is range a range is 25 to 75 mm but there is no step so it depends on the solidworks how to optimize it remember but the main problem with range is the time consumption it will give you much much better result but it will consume a lot of time so i don't prefer range i prefer range with step okay now let's we talk about constraint so basically when we heard constraint it means uh that basically constraint uh let's let me tell you for example click on add sensor click on sensor type select simulation data now down below here you see lots of uh, lots of data quantity but stress strain displacement all these are used as in case of thermal because what we need basically here thermal simulation so what we select thermal after that select the uh, dimensions uh, select the uh, assign select the units as per your requirements here you see model max model minimum etc etc you can choose as per your requirement now click ok here it is asking what is the constraint so my minimum constraint is that the minimum temperature should be 25 degrees celsius it should not be below the 25 degrees celsius basically for example i have to i have give you 100 rupees now what is the maximum amount you can spend you will say 100 rupees why 100 rupees because that is your constraint it is the limit that you set so that it go, don't go to above that so here is uh, the, at the minimum constraint is that my minimum temperature is 25 degrees celsius but it but i allowed it to get above 25 degrees celsius okay so that is what constraint now a question arises: what is the goal basically what i want to do this simulation i want that my temperature will get minimum so what I am going to do is click on thermal temperature click on celsius because that's what I want to do now here you will see uh, temperature minimize maximum and exactly but here I just want to um, uh, my temperature to be minimized that is the reason I am selecting minimize if you want that your heat transfer is more 
uh, if you want that uh, uh, heat transfer is more or at the temperature is uh, less it, it depends upon you so what basically want that my temperature is minimized at the tip okay for that I am doing minimize if you want to say hey I want that at the tip that the temperature is maximized so just click on the maximize remember it is up to you how to do simulation after doing all this click on run now let's see what's, uh, what's happening in the background as you can see it is currently processing the scenarios now here you can see uh, you are watching at the table for example here the initial height is 50 mm and diameter is 10 mm and temperature at the initial is uh, 1173.7 degrees celsius now here it turns the first scenario as I told you before here the height is 25 mm and diameter is 5 mm and it turns the scenario and you can see the temperature here now again it turns the scenario 45 mm and the diameter 5 mm now what it will do it will do the permutation and combination up to 14 scenarios and as you can see it has done currently 6 or 14 scenarios now doing these scenarios you will see that there is temperature at every scenario but what uh, but what is the main um, what is the uh, what is my main aim my main aim is that the temperature will get minimum so whichever the temperature will is below the 1173.7 will get here in optimal but currently because currently the simulation is running none of is shown when the simulation is running uh, simulation just uh, done it will show me which scenario is the better scenario as you can see it currently is doing just uh, one is uh, one is left after that it will gonna finish and 13 or 14 here here it done the simulation here you will see when the, my height is 75 mm and my diameter is 25 mm I got the minimum values so this is how a sim uh, design study is done in case of thermal I hope you like this video if you have any doubts and queries make sure you ask comments and make sure you check out our other videos for example loneliness simulation and another and others the uh, links in links in the de description thanks for watching and have a good day uh, so namaste guys in this video I am going to show how to do a heat sink simulation in SOLIDWORKS so basically uh, what I am going to do is I am going to make a geometry in my ha uh, hair and do the simulation so first of all we need to create the geometry so so let's create our part so here what I am basically doing here I am making a circular chip of a diameter of 30 mm you can make a bigger if you want uh, it's up to you okay uh, let's make it reverse direction and make it a little bigger so click on sketch edit sketch and make it 50 mm uh, to give you a better picture after that exit the sketch now click here click on new part select the new part click on the edit component now select the top plane of the sketch click on sketch press ctrl plus 8 for normal screen to the view now here I am making the heat sink of my uh, chip so enter the diameter you can increase or decrease the diameter as per your requirement so let's say 55 mm diameter my heat sink is bigger than the chip uh, it is not necessary that you make uh, heat sink bigger than the chip it is up to you that you want to make smaller or bigger okay so select the chip and reduce the thickness to 3 mm and click ok and select the top face click on sketch press ctrl plus 8 for normal skin to the view after that what I am going to do is select the edge and click on convert entities now draw some draw rectangle uh, give it a thickness as per the requirement here I am giving a thickness of 2 mm and go to the linear pattern select uh, select this uh, move downward select entities to pattern select the edges of the rectangle 
now increase the number of instances so let's make it to five six and the distance between these rectangle is 10 mm you can change the distance as per your requirement click ok after that click on trim entities and trim the necessary part make sure you do it correctly as uh, during a student you might face a problem if you don't do trim correctly now trim these as you can see that line is here so it is necessary because during extrusion I want these lines to be present here ok and distance is 2mm now trim here also press control press Z click contrim entities and trim this and the last line here is this now go to extrusion click on extrude boss base uh, make it extrusion up to 30 mm so this is basically our fin so exit the assembly edit mode now in the geometry so what we can do is go to the simulation tab if you don't see it click on solidworks adding click on solidworks simulation now click on simulation tab now click here click on new study remember i am also going to show some mistakes that beginners do so make sure you watch the video carefully so, so click on parts right click on part click on chip material so basically I am assuming that my chip is basically made of copper so remember you can select the material as per your requirement here my main aim is just to show how to give material and how to do simulation correctly selecting material and other things is up to you ok and I am assuming that my fin is made of plain carbon steel after that what we can do is right click on connections click on contact set a question arise why I am selecting contact set contact set is basically used uh, in thermal for example you want to click on thermal resistance bounded and insulated insulated basically means that uh, if I select a particular area that is basically act as my insulation here I am selecting thermal resistance a question arise in your mind what is thermal resistance for example here you can see a copper chip and a plate, uh, plain carbon steel they are uh, the plain carbon steel is placed above the above my chip so when my heat is transferred to the plain carbon chip not all he heat is going to transfer properly because there is thermal resistance surface contact due to that some heat is going to lose so that is basically called thermal resistance if you still doesn't understand i highly recommend you that you read uh, books of heat transfer by cycle to understand the concept because it is an engineering concept okay now select this here and right click on click on select other so that sorry select we don't oh, sorry delete contact set delete it right click on click on contact set thermal resistance so right click here click select other so as you can see I am selecting the top part of the chip so click on the chip and select the uh, bottom part of the fin ok and move downward select enter the value of thermal resistance so you can enter the value as per your requirement click ok now uh, go to the thermal loads click on heat power select the to uh, bottom phase enter the value of heat that you think is going to enter in your board uh, in the chip for example so I am assuming that during simulation that my chip is getting a 50 watt power so I am giving a value of 50 watt after that click on convection convection basically means that air is moving around so click on select all exposed faces and check the bottom part because heat is given at the bottom part ok enter the value of convection as per your requirement for example 15 watt per meter square kelvin remember I am going to do a mistake so that you will learn what kind of mistakes you, uh, normally beginners do 
so the result will going to come uh, is going to be incorrect uh, i will tell you why the result is incorrect so run this study as you can see that my result is uh, result is just came out so click on result click on define thermal plots because currently the temperature is in kelvin and i am not comfortable with kelvin i am comfortable with celsius so click on celsius and here you can see that the temperature is minus a question arise how is possible that a temperature come in negative so basically what happened uh, during convection right click on convection click on edit definition so basically what happened that here you see the bulk ambient temperature bulk ambient temperature basically means that the uh, that it is occurring at a temperature where the room temperature is zero kelvin so you know that zero kelvin is a very temp uh, is a temperature that cannot be achieved in real life but here i put uh, but here solvox inbuilt take the bulk ambient temperature to zero kelvin so change this value to 300 kelvin that is near about 27 degrees celsius click okay after that click on run this study here you see now i got the temperature results so let's change the thermal plot again click on celsius click okay but here i got the correct result this time so the bottom part is 19 degrees celsius and the topmost part is uh, 15.062 degrees celsius the reason that the temperature difference is just near about 4 degrees celsius is that the body is very small it is not a big body that is the reason that you don't see a wide uh, change in the gap so if you want to learn how to select a particular fin so that you will get a maximum optimization i highly recommend you that you check out the description link of my video that how to optimize this fin in solidworks so that you get maximum heat dissipation from the fin and you will get the better result i hope you like this video if you have any doubts and queries make sure you ask in comments thanks for watching and have a great day namaste Namaste guys in this video you will learn how to do a drop test simulation analysis in solidworks so to do that first we need to make a part so basically i am doing all this in assembly mode not in a part mode so first of all we need to create a new part click on this part then click here click on edit component now go to the part select the front plane click on sketch press control plus 8 for normal view now enter the length or breadth as per your requirement here i am making a square of 100 by 100 mm and going to extrude it up to a length of 100 mm make sure you select mid plane because it is uh, it will going to make easy for us while doing simulation now right click on box make sure you first exit this uh, part edit component and right click on it click on float as you can see i am able to float it now now go to mates select top plane sorry select right plane and right plane of the assembly click okay and select front plane and front plane of the assembly click okay make sure it doesn't coincide with the top plane now click okay after that go to simulation go to new study click on drop test after that what we need to do is right click on the part apply the material as per your requirement here i am going to use plain carbon steel but you can change the material as per your your requirement after that right click on setup click on define slash edit here select velocity at impact here there are two things uh, i will tell you both of them uh, so first let's talk about drop height so basically drop height means that you are basically throwing 
your part at a certain height you will tell uh, what is the height and here you see two things from centroid or from lowest point so basically from centroid means it's center of gravity and from lowest point means it's the lower point so basically i'm selecting lower point and select the location of gravity downwards click here click on here for reverse direction because gravity is acting downwards uh, and here you see two options like normal to gravity parallel to reference plane rigid target flexible target rigid target is that one uh, that doesn't deform on hitting the surface and flexible target is that one that basically deform and it asking for uh, what is the stiffness and other things so basically in in this study i'm going to talk about rigid target okay so click okay and click on run this study after that uh, after this i will tell you how to do velocity simulation uh, basically we give a certain velocity of uh, to our part and see what kind of impact uh, we are going to see on our part when it strike to a rigid body now right click on stars click on animate here you can see the animation click okay and right click on displacement click on show and right click on animate now let's talk about another thing new study but this time i'm going to use uh, the velocity at impact so here it is asking for the direction in which direction it is going to uh, the velocity is so select this edge because it is acting downwards as you can see the arrow is pointing upwards so click on reverse direction and remember one thing that drop test can do simulation up to a velocity of maximum 500 meter per second here you see this value so we reduce this value to 150 and it's asking for the gravity direction again select this edge make sure it's uh, acting downward and here it is and click okay right click on part select material as per your requirement and click on run this study here you can see after this i will tell you how does uh, damping effect uh, when you give the values uh, some value of to damping how does it going to affect in the simulation uh, for example currently what you have seen is that when a body falls or collide with the surface it just stick with the surface it is not bouncing back uh, it is not why it is not bouncing back because we give damping value 0 if we give value other than 0 it will uh, it will basically bounce so after this simulation i will show you how to do damping and click on animate as you can see it's not much bouncing now right click on displacement click show right click click on animate now let's see what will going to happen when we give a contacted damping for example let's say two okay sorry uh, basically here it asking the value in percentage 
when it says 0 to 1 so basically asking the value in percentage so I have to type 0 0.2 so click on run the study Now click on stars, click on animate. Here you see a very interesting thing that all this experiment is done in microseconds. Okay, and the formation scale is one because I changed the definition. If you, if you saw my previous video, you will realize what it means uh, the formation scale. I hope you like this video. If you have any doubt and queries, make sure you ask in comments. And there are many other cool videos. For example, no linear simulation. Uh, you might have seen uh, while watching this video. It's shown here. So you can check out those videos. Uh, link is in the description. Thanks for watching and have a great day. Namaste. Namaste. In this video, you will learn how to do buckling analysis on a thin shell in SolidWorks and these are the other things buckling analysis when where and how to use shell manager command in solidworks and how to increase or decrease the frame rate of simulation and animation and last but not the least how to add chart definition as per your requirement and there are some more other things you are going to learn in this video tutorial so first thing we need to do is create a part so click on new click on part click ok after that click on front plane right click on it click on sketch now draw a circle of diameter of diameter uh, 55 mm you can change the diameter as per your requirement after that go to surfaces click on extrude surface enter the value 120 mm or above as per your requirement remember I am just going to make slender of the can not the top or bottom face because I am going to simulation on this uh, face ok click ok after that go to solidworks add-in click on solidworks simulation uh, one more thing some people might not able to see surfaces uh, in their tab so what you can do is right click on here here you see different kind of things for example sheet metal weldments so if you don't see surfaces just click on surfaces and you will get the surface tab after that click on solidworks add-in click on solidworks simulation go to simulation click here click on new study click on buckling click ok now the first thing we need to do is right click on it click on edit definition basically where i am is shell definition now let's learn why where and how to use shell definition so shell definition is basically used when we're talking about very thin objects for example plates or 
things that are uh, less than 5 mm or below the below uh, below 10 cent, uh, below 10 mm okay so a question arise uh, why you shall definition uh, not the part or other thing else the reason is that shall uh, when you use shall definition or shall uh, you get more high quality mesh easy simulation and better result that is the reason we use shall definition if you ever get a uh, you get a choice between to choose shall definition and a mo modal part prefer shall definition remember shall definition is only choose when you have a thin part not other here i will enter a value of 0.1 mm because uh, the thickness of the cylinder can is very less so because of that i am entering 0.1 mm it is thin cylinder because of that i am selecting thin it is not thick it is not composite it is a thin now click okay now right click on it click on apply edit material now go to aluminum alloys uh, the reason i am clicking on aluminum alloys is that uh, the aluminum can is basically made of aluminum so i am selecting a material let's say this one okay this one click okay and close now right click on fixture click on fixed geometry this is dollar so that this edge click okay if you want to learn now right how click to on external loads click on port. just go to the select this link face up a click provider. here select this face make sure the value is 1 newton meter because a high value will gonna uh, create a problem click ok after that right click on mesh create mesh increase the fineness click ok now as you can see uh, when i click on fine mesh it create the mesh very quickly and accurately that is the advantage of shell manager now right click on run the study here you see that the displacement is quite large is showing on the reason is that when you do a simulation uh, the solidworks show simulation uh, quite higher than the normal for example uh, go to edit definition click on here you see it's automatic and the scale uses 1.212 now click on user defined click on 0.5 uh, uncheck show colors click on settings click here and sorry click here and mesh click ok now right click click on animate here see the animation now let's see how to increase or decrease the frame rate make uh, first thing you need to do is click on stop now here is basically the frame so here basically five frame uh, five frame per second so to increase the frame rate just enter the value for example 30 click on play uh, the first thing uh, we're gonna do is is uh, it will gonna calculate all the frames here you see it is calculating now it's 30 frames now it can show you the animation and what other thing we learn from this that uh, that at uh, that it can handle a load of 20.52 20 uh, 20.52 force okay this is uh, basically the load factor uh, that is the main aim of calculating okay i hope you like this video if you have any doubt and queries make sure you ask in comment and don't forget to like subscribe and share this video check out the description link and you will find more simulation video tutorials. I hope you like this video. Thanks for watching. Namaste.
Namaste. In this video, we are going to learn how to do a non-linear simulation in SolidWorks. So here, basically, I made three parts. Let's see the drawing of each part. The first part, I called it vendor. You can call it or uh, write name as per your requirement. Here, you can see the dimensions, so you can make for yourself. Remember the main thing here in triangle is th is this the triangle only. The triangle total length is 200 mm and the distance from the center is 100 mm and the depth of the triangle is 55 mm. Make sure this point is at the center of this line. It doesn't matter what is the height of this, uh, you can make as per your requirement. All you need to make sure is that the length of this is remain same and there is a fillet of 10 mm at the end is here as you can see it's curved so i just use a fillet command here now let's move to the second part the second part is basically is just a line of 300 mm diameter and extruded to length of 50 mm as you can see and not less but last part is here you can see its dimension it its total length is uh, its total length is let's see 300 mm and the cut is 200 mm its total cut length is 200 mm and again the depth is 55 mm with the fillet of radius 10 mm. I show you this drawing so you can make for yourself and do the simulation on your own. Okay, after that I made this assembly. As you can see it's properly assembled and it is totally uh, uh, is coincident with the planes of the surface. Now after that press ctrl plus 8. Now go to Solid SolidWorks add-ins click on SOLIDWORKS SIMULATION after that wait a minute and you will see that a tab appears of so simulation click on simulation after that click on study advisory below the arrow click on new study now move down the cursor select loan linear after that make sure you select static and use 2D simplification a question that will arise in your mind that why I am using 2D simplification. If I do in 3D, what it will wanna do, it will gonna take a lot of time. If I use this 2D, it will reduce the time because it's just 2D geometry and it will show me good result and in a less time. So make sure you set 2D simplification. Click OK. After that, it uh, it is asking me select the plane in which you want. Uh, as you can see it says selection of plane so basically a question as your mind what is mean by section of plane and depth so here i am choosing the front plane why a front plane why not right plane why not top plane i am choosing the front plane because at, with respect to front plane there is a total symmetry of my drawing if i choose the top plane there is no symmetry let me show you Hey, for example I, top, I choose the top plane as you can see at top plane there is no symmetry but if I click on the front plane as you can see there is symmetry on both sides but in case of top plane there is no symmetry on both sides if I click on right plane there is symmetry on both sides but if I use this plane as you can see I can't fix uh, it, it becomes a cantilever problem and you will not gonna like it for example here I click click on it let the 20 mm now click on it as you can see it is not the problem we are going to do so because of that make sure you always click on uh, make sure you click on the front plane now press press control press that or go to new study now go downward select non-linear use 2d simplification click ok now select the front plane I hope you now understand why I am choosing the front plane. If I choose any other plane, then my there is no symmetry in the drawing and it will totally waste it. Now enter the section of depth 50 mm. A question will arise in your mind, why the section of depth is 50 mm? 
because the total width is 50 mm and this symmetry of 50 mm. If I type the value of 20 mm, when I do the simulation and want to see the result in 3D, I can't able to see the result in 3D properly because I select the width of 20 mm, but in reality the total width is 50 mm. So make sure you enter the value of width as same as the assembly or the components. So here I am typing the 50 mm because my extrude is 50 mm. Click OK. After that you can see my 2D geometry. Now what we need to do is apply material. Click uh, press control, click on bender and die. Right click on it, click on apply favorite material. Select the material as per your requirement. For example, I select malleable cast iron. You can choose any other material as per your requirement and play die as a 1060 alloy. Remember, always select the plate material something that uh, that can bend. For example, if I select the plate die material cast iron, we know that cast and iron doesn't bend. They just crack and destroy you destroy themselves. So make sure you select a material in such a way that it can bend under the load or a tensile material. Always select tensile material in case of uh, plate die. Now, delete this component set. Click delete. Now right click on collections. Click on contact set. Make sure you type select no penetration. If I don't click on no penetration, what will happen? It will uh, penetrate the body. In my case, I am just doing deformation test, not penetrating anything or removing material. I am just what I just want is deform like plate uh, bending or sheet bending etc. This is what I am doing here. So first thing it asks select the face. So select the bottom of the plate. Now select the bottom of the uh, top of the tie. Make sure you select all edges. Here you see that I select in, in one a bot, uh, the bottom of the plate in another I select the die top. The reason is that because I am creating a set so that my software know where there is no penetration. Okay, uh, so my so, uh, when I do simulation, SolidWorks now now know that there is no penetration in these bodies. Make sure you click on friction. Without friction, uh, your si simulation is not gone up to the mark, and and you know whenever you do deforming friction play an important role without friction you can't deform anything and make sure uh, select the advanced and surface to surface because uh, the contact is surface to surface when our deformation is gonna happen so that there will be no penetration click ok now right click on it click on contact set now this time we are going to contact set uh, between the plate and the die that is going to bend it Make sure you click all all the uh, all the edges. Click on friction. You can change the friction value as per your requirement. Click on advanced. Make sure it or uh, it is surface to surface. Click OK. After that, what I need to do is uh, go to fixture advisory. Click on fix geometry. Select the stop face. As you can see, arrow showing upward direction but I want that it moves downward so go to advance click on this arrow as you can see arrow is uh, showing upward so make sure you click reverse direction and enter the value of 80 mm as you can see the arrow is pointing downward so this is basically what I want so what it will happen uh, what it will gonna do that when I do the simulation it will move the move this part to 90, uh, 90 mm remember I maintain a distance of 100 mm while doing assembly so you need to do that and here select angle plane direction make sure it is 0 so a question arises in your mind uh, what does this do so for example when this body falls I don't want that it moves uh, in x direction uh, in, in the other of this direction so when I type the value 0 it will only just can go move downwards because I click the direction 90 so it can't go upward it just only go downward not, uh, not in x directions okay as you can see it is x axis 
and I just click on x axis 0 and y axis I just click on reverse direction so it goes 90 mm downwards okay click ok now here uh, go to fuse geometry click on fuse geometry now select the bottom of the die click on fix geometry I think uh, just remember one thing it doesn't matter what you do while assembling fixed anything or not while doing simulation you need to redefine what is fixed or what is not if you don't your simulation is not gonna work properly again click on fix geometry select this side of the plate so that when the plate gonna bend these edges don't move click ok after that just click on run this study or you can click on right click apply mesh or you can create the um, meshing as per your requirement here I just simply want to show you how to do simulation I am not going to details just ignore this here you can see the live preview that it going downwards here it shows now bending here as you can see it's, uh, it's bent now somebody say hey I want to see the result in 3D so what you need to do is just right click on it click on show as 3D plot here you can see in 3D remember when I told you uh, select the width of 50mm and, and told you the, what's the funda of, of doing all this so here you can see uh, now you understand what's the reason of all doing this so now let's click on plot tools click on probe for example I want to know what is the stress at this point so here you can see at the node 2585 the stress value is this at a certain location here you can get the sum values average maximum minimum root mean square value uh, the root mean square value basically means uh, it is a statical method to find the best value so it is a, a much better value you can also plot the graph for example click on the plot graph here I just click on one point for example select multiple points now go to pro here you can see the stress is maximum and the here stress is maximum that is the first point after that i go uh, outwards and i select accidentally top of the total little top of the plane because of that shows the graph i hope this video helps you uh, and you can do more 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 things for example displacement show and you can just click on animate so that you know what's the better result uh, or you can increase uh, as you can see it, it gives you a clear picture and strain if you want to make a report just click on report So what we're gonna do? It will create a report for you. All you just need to do is uh, write the name of all these things and logo, whatever you want, and it will create a fully published report for you. Uh, you you want to do? So create cancel because, or you can just click on publish. So what will we gonna do? It will gonna open the MS Word and create a full report for you. It will gonna take a time. So. As you can see now it starts so while doing reporting let me tell you what what kind of things it will gonna show uh, it will gonna show what are the bonding conditions we applied and what are the loads what are the maximum stress what are the average stress uh, 
and many other things if you want to insert a particular pictures that you want to show hey i want to do this thing you can also do that what you need to do is uh, while doing simulation use uh, well when you uh, while you see when i click on publish report you see there is a button uh, well, uh, button called add pictures so you can click on that and add the particular pictures of the simulation images so it will help to your customer or your research work so what you want to basically show it show uh, want to show here yeah, it's currently making generating a document for me Here you see uh, what I am doing in the background is basically writing that thing. Now it will show me. Here you can see my survey simulation. Close it. Now tell me the properties of the material that I applied and the yeah, strength, etc. Position issue, everything you need to show your customer or you need to show in uh, service here is showing the mesh quality just remember higher the mesh quality higher the uh, better is the result here is the simulation results here is the uh, in strain here is basically displacement and here is basically engineering strength engineering strain ESTRN means engineering strain equivalent strain okay equivalent strain also and conclusion you can type conclusion whatever you observe from it i hope you like this video if you have any doubts and queries make sure you comment and please give me your valuable feedback what do you like and what you don't like in this video i hope you like this video if you have any doubts and queries make sure you comment thanks for watching please subscribe and have a great day namaste namaste in this video we will talk about centrifugal force, what are its effects and how much it produces stress and strain. So we are going to use SOLIDWORKS simulation. So here I draw a merry-go-round. Now I draw a merry-go-round because it is a very good example of centrifugal force. We can calculate what kind of stress strain and what kind of impacts. Click uh, first of all go to study advisor select static click ok after that right click on part select apply edit material select the material as per your requirement click apply and close after that go to external loads advisor select centrifugal force now it says select selected reference now click on click here Select this curved surface. After that, it asks you the velocity. Uh, it asks you enter angular velocity and angular acceleration. You can choose the units as per your requirements. Here, I am going to enter the value 300 rpm. Remember, 300 rpm means in 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 a minute it will rotate 300. Um, it means in a minute it will complete 10 rounds now it is asking for the acceleration value I am entering the value 10 here you see oh sorry uh, here you here you are able to see that arrow rotates clockwise if anybody wants to change the direction anti-clockwise just click on reverse direction ok and enter the value of 10 now click ok after that go to fixture advisory select fix geometry select this face and click ok uh, when i select the fixture advisory uh, fix geometry it doesn't mean this this part does not move it just only mean that uh, it take a reference if i use roller or slider it uh, the centrifugal force you can't able to calculate Many people will start thinking that I fixed this part, so how does it will going to rotate? No, it only assumed that uh, that this body will rotate, 
and this is the axis that remains fixed that uh, it means that and this axis does not reflect right uh, left right or any, any other direction just it remains fixed in its position now go to run and run this study as you can see uh, our stress strain here is the deflection now right click on displacement click animate stop the animation let's increase the frame rate click play as you can see and remember that maximum deflection is 2.04 10 to power minus 1 uh, 10 to power minus 1 mm so the current deflection you are seeing here is actually 500 times or 600 times more than the actual the reason uh, solidworks shows 500 times or 600 times extra is that because so that you able to know where is actual actually deflection happening click cancel now again right click on send uh, again click on centrifugal uh, now here uh, we have seen a result when we uh, when we have oscillation of 10 rpm now reduce this oscillation to 1 click ok now run the study now go to displacement as you can see our value decreases so what it will tell us that if we in certain if we increase the oscillation it will increase our stress and strain now let's see another example of a flywheel now go to simulations go to select uh, study advisor select new study select study apply the material Selects the units as per your requirement. Click OK. Now click run this study. As you can see, uh, here the reflection is maximum so we get an idea now right click on it click show and here the displacement is maximum so it means here the here, uh, here the maximum deflection we get and in stress case here the stress is low but here the stress is high you can from the color bar uh, check can check what is value near about i hope you like this video Thanks for watching and have a great day and please don't forget to subscribe this video uh, so that it motivates us to make better and new videos. Thanks for watching and have a great day. Namaste.